Friday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central. That's 9.30 uh, Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here in the evening. And I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way and just come and chit chat with me. Uh, so we are continuing the stitching pause block tonight. It's the a quilt block from the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. It has uh, embroidery and piecing and needle turn applique and we are at the point that we are working on our needle turn applique. We have one little guy, one little leafy on there that we did yesterday. Uh, I'm hoping to get at least one more done today, maybe even two if we can get going. Uh, we, we prepped it all last night. So a couple days ago, we sewed the background. We got this cute little border, mini border going on here. Uh, last night, we traced uh, the design onto our background, and we were able to stitch one of the leaves. So it took a long time to trace. So I'm thinking we should be able to pump out at least two of these leaves here. So, and you know, we have all the pieces prepped as well. So we, we are prepped. All we have to do is do now. So that's, that's the fun part. We're at the actual fun part after all that prep is done. So, all right, let's get going, rolling up the sleeves. Uh, hope you all had a nice day as well. I'm gonna flip you around here. Okay, getting right down here already. So, we did our first little leaf here, and uh, we are going to move on to, we've labeled them all, so we're going to move on to the B leaf here. So uh, let's first find our shape here. I'm going to have to lift you guys up a little bit more, otherwise I'm going to end up hitting you in the face. Okay, so we labeled our shapes. And we put the we put the letter uh, kind of upright, so I know that this shape doesn't go like this because then my B is upside down. It goes goes like this. So what I'm going to do is trim. First, I'm going to trim that away from the rest of uh, my group. I'm leaving it together just so I don't lose everything. I just have you know it'll just um, I won't lose a bunch of tiny pieces that are just sticking together. I did that for the paws as well. So like this is paw number two and these are all the little foot nubbins for it. I wanted to just keep it together so I don't have tiny ovals everywhere and, and getting confused. So I did that with the leaves as well. I'm just kind of keeping it together. Okay so I am going to trim this to my a little shy of a quarter inch allowance in between a quarter inch and an eighth of an inch or so, probably a little bit closer to a quarter of an inch. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about right in the middle there. Three sixteenths of an inch, how about that? Okay, so there we are. So we're gonna do this just how we did last night. Um, I didn't watch any new YouTube videos or anything like that, so we're just going based on how I've been kind of doing it in the past, uh, which seems to work just fine. Um, all right, so again, my B is up right there, so I know it's not like this, it, it's, it's this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match those lines, the lines of my background, with the lines of the front. So I'm just kind of peeking underneath and... I'm basically lining up the two points of the leaf. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to grab just an applique pin. You can use a different pin. Uh, some people actually use some glue to tack it down, but uh, I am doing it with the, the pin tonight. And I'm going to just throw that in there. I'm going to actually put it kind of low because I'm going to do this top area first. So just so it's more out of the way, I'm going to Put it right here. Okay, so now we can start stitching. I am using that size 11 straw needle, or Milner's is a different way 
that it's called Milner's or Straw Needle. And all that is is just a longer needle. A longer needle with a small eye and a sharp, sharp point. Uh, this one's very thin, which I like for a needle turn applique. Uh, the size 11 is a very, is a thin one. So uh, size 11, Milner's or straw needle. Uh, and I have links here if you want to just uh, look it up. Uh, it, it's just a little easier to stitch when you have a longer needle. We have done it with just a normal, shorter, sharps needle. Uh, but I do like the length and I do like how thin it is. Those are the two features. And it's just super duper sharp, which means I sometimes stab myself, but it does go through the fabric really nicely. Oh, Gail, it's all, it's uh, storming in Fargo. Oh man, that probably means it's coming our way. Um, all right, and I'm gonna use my 50 weight thread. Uh, I've heard people say that they actually prefer 80 weight thread, which is even thinner. And I can understand why, just like a thin, strong thread, like an 80 weight, uh, cotton thread like this. Um, I can see why people would, would like the thinner thread. Just the thin, the thinness of the needle, the thinness of the thread, that's just going to make more delicate stitches with um, smaller holes. And But, you know, I think what we're doing here is totally fine. So, all right, I, I snipped off about a foot or so. Actually, probably a little bit more. I probably have more than I need here. You know, really, I only need enough to go around this, these little shapes. But I, I notice that if I'm, if I have too little thread, I keep accidentally pulling the needle off the thread. So um, a little bit more than I need, but not so long that I feel like it's going to get tangled and, and everything else as we go, go along here. So, all right, uh, I'm going to just tie a knot in the end here, just wrapping around the needle a bunch of times and then pulling it through. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. I haven't mastered that little twisty twist to get a knot. <laughs> so we're doing it that way. All right, and I want to start this. Let's try doing it on the, well, I'll start by holding it. I, last night I tried stitching by having it flat against a surface, and I do kind of want to try that again. Um, but I think we'll start with just, or maybe we'll do this whole thing holding. It's actually a little bit more comfortable for me to hold it. Um, just because I'm not used to, to having it on the ground. And actually, I think my table is a little too tall for that. Like, I feel like I'm hunching my shoulders quite a bit. I would have to remove, um, I have my sewing table here yet. I think if I remove that, then I'll be a little bit lower. So maybe, maybe on Monday when we come back to this, I'll try it on a lower surface. Um, so I think tonight, tonight I will um, start up a little higher um, just by just holding it instead of laying it flat to work. All right, so I'm going to start kind of in the middle of this first kind of long edge. You don't really want to start at um, tight curves, so I wouldn't want to start like right here on this piece, for example, and I don't want to start at points. So I am going to start at just kind of this almost flat but not quite edge here. And we're going to start by just folding Folding the uh, edge under to our blue line uh, that we drew on the top of this fabric. And we're going to match that line with our background line here. So I, I folded it under. You can use your needle. Your needle is turning the thread a little, or the fabric. And it's needle turn applique. And I'm matching up those two, the, the foreground and that background line that I'm just going to come up from the back and go through both lines and I'm just catching, you know, a couple threads, just barely, like maybe two threads of the, that folded edge there. And to hold that in place, I'm going to just go around that spot one more time. Here's where I'm stabbing my finger. There we go. I'm just grabbing like a thread from the bottom and a thread from that, uh, the top fabric fold. That, that extra little stitch kind of locks it, locks it in place. So now I can let go and it will be there. Um, all right. So next up, we want this curve. We want to kind of form this curve. And then all we're going to do is tack, tack it down. So I'm going to take my needle and you can use your fingers again. Sometimes it's just easier to get your fingers in to help fold, but I'm going to try and do it with my needle. Um, I'm going to just 
pull the edges under. Sometimes you can grab the actual uh, seam allowance with, with the pin or the needle and stuff it under. And then you kind of want to swoop, swoop um, your needle through just to make sure that your seam allowance is laying decent. And all the time we're going for that, that blue edge, that edge that we drew on our front fabric and we're trying to match it up with the back. So once you have the next little area ready, then you can stitch it down. We're basically, like I said, just tacking this down. So I'm gonna go in that same spot just directly across from where our stitch is coming out of our front fabric and I'm gonna go into the back fabric. So just kind of almost the same hole there, like that. And then I'm gonna come up at the same time about you know an eighth or so inch away. That'll be our first stitch. We're coming up straight through as best we can the background and that foreground fold again. So it'll just look like we made one tiny little little tack right there. If we can pull that tight. And uh, um, it looks like I have, I can do one more stitch here. So I'm gonna go just directly across again. So I'm, I'm going in just the background fabric and then I'm gonna come up on through the back and into that foreground fabric, just that that hole there again, or the, the fold, I mean. Oops, and I caught my little pin. There we go. So we got uh, two, two more stitches tacked down there. So I'm gonna just keep going until we've reached that point. There, I, go. I just folded it under there and I'm, I'm matching up these two points Checking to make sure that my curve is still looking kind of graceful, that there's not like weird points everywhere. And we're going to just keep tacking that down until we get to that point, leafy point. I'm going to put like one tiny little stitch here. Sometimes when I approach the points, and on curves, I will add a couple extra short little stitches just to hold it down a little bit more. We're gonna be stuffing this point, which doesn't have a lot of space to hold fabric. We're gonna stuff all, all of this excess fabric up there. I'll show you that in a sec. So um, there, we're at the point. And I'm gonna just go around that spot one more time just to hold it in place like we did at the beginning. So same spot, one extra stitch, and now it's it's held there. I can let it go and it's not gonna come undone. But there we go, we have that arch started. That's looking good. Um, now let's fold this under. Oh yeah, I, that's a good point, Gus. I have no idea how I'm going to quilt this yet. It could be kind of fun to just echo it. That's that's probably what I'll end up doing it doing. So echo quilting is where you just kind of trace around whatever the inside shapes are. So maybe I'll trace around this embroidery and the applique, and then I'll just keep adding more tracings, like a, keep echoing lines further and further out. If I had a, if I had to choose right now, that's probably what what I would do. But who knows? I'm sure we'll come up with other fun ideas uh, by the time <laughs> by the time we're ready to quilt this. Which who knows? Maybe we'll quilt this really soon. I have three other finished blocks. We could sew those four blocks together and start quilting it. Um, all right. So I'm going to do something that I didn't do last night, and it's just to reduce the bulk a little. I'm going to just trim this little dog ear away. That's just that much less fabric that I have to stuff down in here. So I'm going to kind of fold the fabric um, against the point here, and I'm going to fold again. I want to stuff this fabric into, into the edge again. So I'm just basically folding over the next area. And you know what? Now that we have some stitches down, I'm going to get rid of, rid of that pin too. So just folding under, and like I said, I kind of, kind of like doing it with my um, 
my hands. And I'm also trying to not, you know, this, the, your back fabric is going to want to bunch too. You are going to want to keep that fabric as flat as can be. And that's why working on the table is actually kind of nice because you can lay your back fabric flat while you kind of manipulate this top a little bit. So that's kind of the neat thing about working on uh, a table. So that's actually what I want to try a little bit more of on Monday um, when I lower that table a little bit. Okay, so let's grab the needle. The needle's gonna help me shape this a little bit more. I, I am, again, just trying to get to that blue line on the top and match that blue line with the blue line on, on the back here without having like weird bloops and stuff. So I'm just gonna manipulate it a little bit until I have the shape. So it's starting to come along there. Uh, let's start tacking that down. So I'm gonna go into that point area again, just in the back. And I'm gonna come up really close uh, to, to the point here, just to tack my first little stitch down. All right, and we're gonna keep going. I have enough for this next stitch. There we go. So that's a good looking point and our, our, we're just kind of continuing along our edge here. So I'm going to tuck the next part under. You know, I'm trying to avoid little folds like this because that'll kind of make like a point on the front. So when I have something like that, I just kind of go in and try and manipulate the, the seam allowance a little bit so it doesn't have a fold in it. So I'll just poke with my needle until it's um, more curved. See, now it's now I've lost that point, which is nice. All right, our blue lines are matching up, so let's just stitch a few more stitches down. I do keep stabbing myself. That will, that will change when we do it all on the table too, so I'm kind of excited to give that a go on, on Monday. I suppose I could just move all this table and stuff now, but eh, I'll clean up my whole area again. I like doing that on weekends. Just during the week here when we're working, it just gets more and more stuff gets piled up on, on this table. And then on the weekend, I kind of I fold up the fabric and put it away and clean the area a little bit more. So I will clean up this area for Monday and lay everything out. Um, all ready for the rest of the needle turn because we'll be doing a needle turn for a little while yet. We got all those paws to do too. Oh, Valerie, I'm hoping to work on that this weekend too. So um, we were going to move the studio into the basement, but I think we might keep it here yet. But um, we are going to be working on how we actually shoot the video and how we do our sound and, and our lighting and all that. So, um, so we'll probably work on that a bit this weekend. Oops, I sort of, I hit you guys a little bit there. So soon, eventually we might transition completely to the basement, but we still have a lot of work to do in the basement itself. But that's, that's the end goal. We'll see how it goes, but I am hoping to work on that a little bit this weekend. All right, I'm folding all the way up to, to my point now. So my, my points are matching again, and I just wanna finesse this curve a little bit. I'm just popping out the seam allowance a little bit. There we go, I think that looks good. Oh, the tiny paws were a nightmare for you, Patty. Yeah, I, I'm I'm getting my practice in with these leaves before I attempt attempt the little paw, uh, little nubbins. Um, the reason why something that's small can be so difficult 
is because you're stuffing so much. Remember, like you're you're turning all that seam allowance underneath. So all of that seam allowance has to fit in these tiny, tiny little spots. And that can just, that can be difficult, um, especially, especially keeping a nice round shape and everything can be a challenge. So yeah. And, uh, you know, in theory, you can think, oh, I'll just cut away more seam allowance, then there won't be so much stuff underneath there. But if you cut away too much seam allowance, then you don't have much to fold underneath anymore, and it gets, it starts fraying and everything. So that's, that's, uh, that can get difficult. Oh, <laughs> Ashley, say, say hi back. That's fun. All right, so I'm at this point now, and I'm going to go in that spot. I'm going to do that double. Uh, I'm going to do that uh, going around again. There we go. That locks it in place again. And we're almost done with this one. Ooh, look how skinny and cute it is. I, I like this little leaf. Um, so we just have to fold that uh, this tip underneath again, and then... We just have a couple more stitches to go. We can just fold like this whole piece underneath. And I am, I am just going to reduce the bulk here again a little bit. Again, this makes me a little nervous because I don't want to get rid of too much seam allowance that it um, starts to fray on me or anything. But I think a little re bulk reducing is going to be helpful. So I'm going to try and flatten this out first. So I'm just kind of pushing it down like that. And let's try that again, and then folding it all the way underneath. And that's where I'm gonna get my needle again to, to help me out. Oh, yes, Jackie. So you've hit the nail on the head. So the puffiness of the leaves, that puffiness, how it's just kind of floating on top of the fabric, and how cute that is, that is the that is the nature of um needle turn applique and that's it, I, I think it's one of the features that makes it just so dang cute is how it just like sits on the sits on the surface you know um i just i just love that uh but yeah it's tedious could you imagine doing a whole giant quilt like this uh that's kind of on my um quilting bucket list i suppose wouldn't that be neat but I don't know if I really want to start a project like that um, but it would be just so fun to um, like design a whole scene or a whole big thing and then needle turn the whole deal over like however many years it's gonna going to take sort of thing I just think that would be just kind of neat but yeah Tedious, tedious for sure. Having a little trouble getting this fold, so what I'm going to do is just kind of grab the top and we'll just do a little stitch over, over all that bulk that doesn't want to stay behind there. Yeah, so this, this was for me, so I, I basically learned how to needle turn with the first Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. Um, and I found it personally the most challenging new thing that I've learned. And it wasn't until I, um, like on YouTube or something, discovered some tricks for uh, like inner curves and inner points. Uh, luckily we don't have any of those here um, until we get to these guys up here. Uh, after that then like ugh, my pieces were looking so weird like I had like weird bloops everywhere and no matter how hard I tried I just couldn't quite figure it out and then I watched a couple videos and learned a, a few tricks so now I'm, I'm doing some of that and now everything's looking a lot better so it, it took me a while so I had to 
I tried for a while, and then I had to, like, educate myself a little bit more, and then then practice a lot. Like, this, is this I feel like I needed the most pra continual practice for things to start looking a little bit better. Um, but I'm, I'm, and I, and I can feel that I have a ways to go yet, but I, I, oh gosh, I'm light years from where I was. So definitely give it a try, but like, don't get, don't get too discouraged right away. It's, it's worth it. It, it actually is really relaxing just to stitch and not really have to think about anything. Um, just folding, folding a, a, a piece of, of fabric over, it is relaxing for sure. All right, and I'm gonna go to the back again here, and we have this leaf done. I think for sure we can um, get another one done tonight. Cute, I like this itty bitty one, cute, cute. Just tying, tying a little knot here. something. Actually, I don't know why, what I'm trying to do here. There you go. Grabbing a little fabric. A little knot. And there we go. Um, I think I have enough thread on my uh, needle yet that I'm just going to use. I'm going to use the same thread even though this is the length that I kind of don't like because I accidentally keep pulling the thread off the needle later, but let's, let's see how I do with a short thread like that. Okay, let's do the next one up. That is C. All right, so here's my C piece there. I'm going to just separate it from the rest. Make sure you don't cut into that seam allowance on the other one. All right, just two left. All right, so now... Uh, let's trim. Ooh, this may be a little, a little too small at seam allowance. Let's see how we do with it. This is closer to an eighth than a quarter inch, that's for sure. You could kind of lop off those ends a little bit at this point already. Okay. All right, so um, the C, I have it upright, so I know it's this way, not, not this way. So let's, even though know, it probably wouldn't really matter all that much, um, but on a different piece it probably would. So let's match up those points, the front and back points. And you know, this assumes that I've traced it perfectly on one piece to the next, and this one already, I can tell that I I went, a, this one's a little, drawn a little longer than what it is on the back, so, you know, we're just going to stitch it down as best we can. All right, I got my little needle back, or pin, I mean. This is in place as good as it's going to be. Oh, it's just, this pin is not wanting to poke. All right. I'm going to start again on like kind of like a the straight-ish edge away from, from the point. So I'm going to kind of start eh, kind of in the middle of that curve again. All right, let's get a knot in the back on the end of this again. All righty, let's uh, flip it around again. Flip at the blue line. We'll hold it again. And I'm matching up the blue line on the back and that's all we need to get started. Let's just lock that first spot in place. Going around that same spot again. That's just to get us started here. Okay, there. So that first fold's kind of locked. Now we can kind of lay it on the, on the flat surface again. We can kind of form the rest of that curve up to the point. Uh, normally I wouldn't do 
all the way to the point all at once, but it is kind of a graceful curve or a straight line you can do that with. Once we get like, you know, in these little tight little areas here, I'm, I'm only gonna be able to do like one stitch worth of distance at a time, really. That's why these, these nice straight areas or like great, or like small gradual curves are like the best for, for needle turn. I love, love those. All right, because then we can stitch like four or five stitches all at once instead of just one. That's a treat when you can do that. So pile of little stitches here. I'm trying to keep just those uh those points matched up at the end. And I'm I'm also trying to keep my back fabric as flat as I can too. That'll be easier if I just lay it on the table. But again, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna focus on that on Monday. So that's kind of a new new technique to me. So I'm gonna look up how to do it again and Rearrange my space a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna do one more stitch and then I'll do that point area. All right, up to the point. And that point, I'm gonna go around that spot, that same spot again to do that kind of lock in place stitch. All right. There we are, we got our first little graceful curve going. Looking good. All right, I think I'll remove the pin at this point again. Um, you know, once once it's stitched down a little bit. Um, I know in that video that I watched, they just kept using the pin. I, I'm gonna look that up again and, and uh, we're gonna give that method a try. So, all right, um, I'm gonna flatten this out and start kind of stuffing it underneath just kind of lifting up and, and turning. And there we go, we're actually pretty good right there. I'm gonna just put that first stitch down. Once things match up there, it's time to just lock it in place with a like tack it down. And then I'll worry about the next part after that. So going through that point area again and let's lock that little area down. Okay, cool. Let's keep tucking this underneath. There we go. Try and there's just a little bulk there. Let's fold it under. I think we're good for a couple more stitches here. Ugh. It does sink in after a little, the relaxing part of it all. I think I only got like one thread there. I kind of want to get like two threads on the folded edge. All right, that point's looking really nice actually. Good point there. So let's, let's, uh, let's go a little further. Let's see if we can get like a good part of this curve down. Oh, Gail! Yay, that's that's exciting. So I, I can't read all your comment, but um, but I'm, I'm happy you got that all cut out and ready to go. We'll definitely be here a little while yet. Um, so on so it looks like I can do two of these leaves a night. So on Monday we will get the I think we'll finish the leaves. Then. Um, then we'll start the pause as well. Uh, next week, though, we will also be working on, uh, we'll, we'll be taking a tiny break from this because we'll be working on um, uh, the new uh, little felt village uh, house from uh, um, Bets White. So Bets is releasing her new, her new, 
a pattern for her little felt village club. And we are going to take a look at that next week too. I don't think it's going to take really long and it's going to be kind of like a fun, a fun fall project to, to work on. So I'm excited for that. So, you know, I, I'm doing this practicing on the needle turn, but we're actually going to stop for a little to do just like for the rest of the week or whatever to do this other project. Um, but it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be a nice break. And then I will be sure to watch those videos and come back here um, with some new tricks and I'll, I'll, I'll link to some of those videos too. Yes, Ashley, pick up some fabric and do some hand sewing for sure. All right, so this point isn't gonna match up perfectly because I drew this leaf a little bit longer um, on, on my top fabric than I did the background fabric, I think. But that's okay. But I got this, this arc folded under me so I, can, I think I can stitch all the way to the point again. Yeah, and then we just have that point to tuck under and about two more stitches after that and we have two leaves done. And actually, I kind of want to leave those other two leaves for Monday, so we might actually call it just a little early evening tonight. The second leaf went way faster than I thought. I mean, I suppose we're not done quite yet. Should count my chickens before they hatch, I suppose. All right, one more stitch here. Ooh, that's looking cute. Great. All right, let's. Uh, oh, did I did I go over that again? Yeah, I don't think I did that second stitch. See, I'm already already messing up. And if I did, then this is a third stitch, so it, it's going to be held extra in place. <laughs> I must have done it. It wasn't coming out. All right, let's tuck under this edge. That's looking good. I think we'll tack those down and then we'll flip the rest of this under. Switched my hands over. I'm trying to get rid of some of the bulky folds of the seam, seam allowance. Oh, Arloa, I hope you um, can recover over the weekend a little bit. I hear ya. You know, let's give that a try. I, I am gonna get my stiletto in here and see if I can... a little stronger device to stuff this under. Yeah, I think I like the needle better. I'm just trying to get this... I'm just trying to shape this last little point. I got a little fold in that seam allowance that I'm just gonna try and ease ease out of there. Oh, there, that did it. Okay, now we're ready to tack this down. If that seam allowance gets too folded when you push it to the back, um, it wants to make one of those little sharp points on the front. So you got to kind of like Get rid of that fold and kind of spread it over. Oh, you know, almost like making a ruffle instead of one big fold on the back. It's kind of how I have to imagine it, or on the on the inside. All 
All right, this will be my last stitch here and well, my last, I guess, moving stitch. And then we'll do that one last stitch to, to hold it in place. You know, I'm still matching up the front line, drawn line to the back drawn line. That's how we know where everything gets placed. And then to the back, then we'll we will uh, tie this off and see what we got. But two more leaves. Feeling good about that. Definitely, definitely takes time. So once we get to the to the foot, I'm guessing we might only be able to do two or three of these little paw circles at night too. So you know, just that's gonna take a good week or more just to do the paws, but it's good practice. An hour a day, <laughs> you know, here at night, and that's a lot of hours uh, put in, put into practice. But there we go, cute. I think that um, our points turned out really nice for that. Our curves turned out nice. I think we're definitely improving from our first one. So it just it takes a night to, to get back into it, I think, but that's, I think that's looking pretty good. And we got this cute little guy here as well. Oh, it's, it's, it's cute. I, I'm glad we went with those colors. And then the other, the paws, just to like check it out again, will be, let's just like wrap this up. The paws will be, well, that's kind of cute like that. What if we just, ooh, this is a fun idea. Just rolling up a piece of fabric, it looks like a rose a little bit and just tacking it down at the bottom that would be kind of a fun idea but anyway <laughs> so this is kind of the color of, of the paw so it's all really subtle but that is how my whole entire quilt is um, you know you could do bright paws you know it's very bright colors in the example but you know you could have done a bright border but mine is I'm, I'm very consciously trying to do a little bit more muted quilt because that's that's my challenge for myself with this quilt because uh, I, I don't usually go that direction. <laughs> very muted, and all my last couple of quilts were very bold and bright, and I'm trying to trying to be a little bit more subtle um, this time around. So, all right, you guys, there we are. We got two more little leafies on there. Uh, Monday, we'll finish up these two, and uh, that's that then. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around, and we'll call it an evening here. All right, hello again, everyone. Thank you again for joining me tonight. Let's show you guys this. There we go, closer up, you can see a little bit better. But there are the cute little leaves. They do just look like they're floating off the fabric. And again, that is the beauty of needle turn applique. It's just like these floaty little shapes and uh, once we get the embroidery on here, it's just gonna look so pretty. And that's actually what we did for the I Love Home quilt that we did, which we still need to finish as well. We finished the front of it, but that whole thing for me was like how pretty needle turn applique looks with embroidery. So I love, uh, I love the chance to get to combine those those two again here. I think it's gonna just be very cute, very darling when we're done. Here again is the example from the book, Stitch and Paws. Uh, it is on page 70. Yep, page 70 of the Splendid Sampler 2 book if you wanted to check that out. And uh, I'll be back here on Monday uh, to work on this a little bit more. Uh, keep an eye out this weekend. I have a little giveaway that I'm going to be putting on the Facebook page. Um, I'll have more info well, on the Facebook page. I'll probably get it up. Uh, either tomorrow or Sunday. So keep an eye for that. And uh, keep an eye on either Monday or Tuesday, uh, Betts is going to be releasing that new that new house for her club. And um, I bet it's just going to be so cute. I'm excited to see it. Uh, so I will be sending an email out about that as well, that project again. So keep an eye on your emails. And of course, you can get on my emails at penguinandfish.com. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to see you guys there. <laughs> All right, so have a great weekend, and I'll see y'all again on Monday. Good night.